RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, proudly presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Jane Wyman, production A Kiss in the Dark, director Delmer Daves... Hollywood Screen Directors presents some laughter on a love song. The motion picture comedy, A Kiss in the Dark, starring Jane Wyman in her original role of Polly Haynes. Although few of you are familiar with Miss Polly Haynes, I assume that most of you are familiar with her legs. On magazine covers and billboards, you've seen them encased in nylon. Miss Polly Haynes is a model. Miss Polly Haynes is, to put it bluntly, quite a dish. The orchestra will now play a brief passage while the gentlemen of the audience record the fact that she lives at the Cleopatra Arms apartment house. The Cleopatra Arms. Mr. Willoughby, you can't mean it. It's happened, Polly. After all these years, the old girl and I have parted. Oh, you poor darling. Here, sit down on the couch. She belongs to somebody else now, Polly. I wonder if they'll treat her as well as you did. I hope they'll keep her warm in the winter. And paint her balconies every three years. And keep her plumbing in good shape. (laughs) Golly, Mr. Willoughby I just can't believe that you've sold the apartment house I tried to make the Cleopatra Arms a real home for the 53 tenants, Polly But I went broke doing it Well, you're going to stay on as manager, aren't you? If the new owner will permit it Mr. Willoughby, you didn't sell it to a... A businessman Oh, no, Polly I couldn't do a thing like that I sold it to an artist A man with a soul. A man with a heart to understand her drainage problems. Well, who is he? Eric Phillips, the concert pianist. Of course, I didn't meet him. I closed the deal with Mr. Danilo, his business manager. Mr. Willoughby, come on. You and I are going to pay a call on Mr. Eric Phillips. Mr. Danilo, are you or are you not my business manager? No, no, please, Eric, don't upset yourself. Upset myself? Every time I sit down at the piano, you come slamming into my apartment, shuffling papers in my face. Your investments. You manage my investments. I want to practice. If you'll only sign these papers. Practice? Why won't people let me practice? Practice, schmack to sign the papers. <laughs> Mr. Danilo, I've come to a decision. I have to work harder, improve myself. I want you to cancel the summer concert tour. Cancel? What about my 10% commission? Cancel that, too. Very well. I hope you have time to sign these papers. What are they? Your latest investment. I bought you an apartment house, the Cleopatra Arms. All right, all right, I'll sign. There. Thank you. And good afternoon, backstabber. (laughs) Peace. 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 Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips! Huh? Who are you? I'm Mr. Willoughby, and this is Polly Haynes. Oh, how interesting. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy. Oh, Mr. Willoughby has a question to ask. Very well, Mr. Willoughby. Uh, it's just that uh, now that you've got her, what are you going to do with her? Who? Cleopatra. (laughs) Much too old. Oh, but Mr. Phillips, she's yours now. I knew I shouldn't have entered that soap contest. 
Oh, there's so many things you ought to know about her. Uh, you'll find it difficult to keep her warm on winter nights. Please, don't be vulgar. <laughs> I'm afraid she needs a new foundation. Miss Haynes, I refuse to be intimidated by a girdle. <laughs> a girdle? Mr. Phillips, we're talking about your apartment house, the Cleopatra Arms. Oh, oh, yes. yes. And I'm one of the tenants. Mr. Willoughby is the manager and former owner. Yes, well, you can take everything up with Mr. Danilo, my business manager. Well, aren't you interested in the Cleopatra Arms? <clears throat> I'm a pianist. I must practice. I don't want to be concerned with the Cleopatra arms. But that's absentee ownership. And that's life. Good day, Mr. Willoughby. Miss Haynes. Dear me, Polly, he isn't interested. Mr. Willoughby, in a situation like this, a woman always has a last resort. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm a model. Oh, uh, Mr. Phillips. Please, Miss Haynes. Oh, sometimes I envy Beethoven. Why? He was deaf. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Mr. Phillips, the apartment house needs you. The apartment house will have to get along without me. Oh, dear. I just got a run in my stocking. The apartment house will... Uh, the apartment... Oh, my. Well, don't be embarrassed, Mr. Phillips. If you want to look at my legs, go right ahead. Uh, yes, I... <clears throat> Oh, thank you. <laughs> they're, uh, they're kind of my stock and trade, you might say. Uh, Miss Haynes is a model. Wearing stockings is what I do best, Mr. Phillips. Yes, well, I can't tell you how much I admire your career. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Phillips, what were you saying about the apartment house? Apartment house? Mm hmm. Oh, of course, yes. Well, I was just thinking that it'd be nice if all five of us ran over and took a look at it. Five of us? Yes. You and me and Miss Haynes and her two... Don't say it, Mr. Phillips. I'll bring them. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, there before you stands the Cleopatra arms. What? Oh, oh, the apartment house, yes. Oh, well, it's, uh, <clears throat> substantial. Why don't you inspect the premises? I've been doing that ever since you walked into my apartment. <laughs> if Polly means, why don't you inspect the building, Mr. Phillips? Oh, uh, well, if that's what you want, but I really should be practicing. Polly, I don't think I made a very good impression on him. Well, I did. And if I can get Mr. Phillips interested in me, I can get him interested in the Cleopatra arms. But, but what about Bruce Arnold? Oh, well, he does get awfully physical when he's jealous, doesn't he? Well, well, we'll get him on our side. Bruce sells insurance, and Mr. Phillips ought to have something he can insure. He's a pianist. His hands are very precious. His hands? I'll tell Bruce that I'm trying to get Mr. Phillips to insure his hands with Bruce's company. Excellent. Miss Haynes. My name is Polly. Uh, Polly, uh, the building is very nice, but now I must get back to the piano and... Oh, dear, I just got another run in my other stocking. I, yes, well, I, I, I really should get back to my work. I, yes, Mr. Phillips? I, well, aren't you going to show me the lobby? <laughs> right this way, Mr. Phillips. I want you to particularly notice the potted palms. The tenants are very proud of them. Well, I'm happy for the tenants. <laughs> You'll find it a pleasant place. We're all friends here. All just one happy family, except... Hey, you! <laughs> Except for him. Yes, Mr. Bot. What's the idea of all the noise? Really? <laughs> really, Mr. Bot. We know you have to work at night and sleep during the day. Nothing but noise. Noise and clither clatter. Man can't sleep. Who owns the cat that keeps stomping up and down outside my door? <laughs> See here, Mr. Bob. Quiet. Who's this shrimp? Well, that's the new landlord. Yeah? Well, keep it quiet. <clears throat> Bots, if I didn't have to protect my hands, I'd teach you some manners. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with my hands. Go! Oh. Now, keep it quiet, Mr. Manu. <laughs> oh, one big happy family. That bot. 
He hit you right in your potted palm. Oh, Eric, just look at your eye. You ought to put some steak on it, Polly. Well, I don't have any steak. Would some... Would some chicken salad do? Please, just let me up. Now, you just lie here and rest your head in my lap. Polly! Hello, Bruce. Hello, Mr. Isle. Polly, what's the meaning of this? Who is this man? Quiet! <laughs> practice? Why won't people let me practice? You aren't practicing anything with your head in Polly's lap. Now, you see here, young man. Stand up! Bruce, don't, don't. You don't understand. His hand. Here, sport. Go. Oh. There goes my other eye. There goes the rest of the potted palm. There goes the rest of my chicken salad. Have you got a pencil, Polly? Oh, yes, they're in my purse, Mr. Willoughby. Oh, Eric, you look awful. Practice. Why won't people let me practice? Mr. Willoughby, what are you writing? An order for another set of potted palms. The tenants have become quite attached to them, Mr. Phillips, and as manager... Who's going to pay for them? You are. You're the owner. Yeah, that's fine. Fine. I get hit in the right eye. Hit in the left eye, battered, bruised, and insulted, and I end up paying for potted palms. Oh, poor Eric. Does it hurt much? No, nothing hurts me anymore. I'm numb. And, Mr. Willoughby, do you know what you are? What, Mr. Phillips? Fired. Eric! Potted palms. Why won't people let me practice? Polly, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Bruce, you melonhead, he's the new landlord, and he's a famous pianist. I was only trying to get him to take out an insurance policy on his hands from you. Oh, gosh, Polly, I'm sorry. Oh, and poor Mr. Willoughby here, out of a job. That's all right, Polly. It's the Cleopatra arms I'm worried about. Well, don't you worry, Mr. Willoughby. When I get through with Mr. Eric Phillips, he'll wish he was back in the potted palms. <laughs> You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of A Kiss in the Dark, starring Jane Wyman and presented by RCA Victor. Baseball is sure in the air these days, and we mean actually in the air, flying through space on those television channels. And when you can't be there in person, there's RCA Victor Eyewitness Television. Take, for example, the big handsome T-164, the very biggest direct view table model in Eyewitness Television. Big 16-inch pictures that are brilliantly clear and wonderfully steady. And these big pictures are framed in a beautifully finished wood cabinet of striking design which can stand either on a table or on a matching console at base. There is an antenna built into this RCA Victor T-164. The sound comes to you through the famous RCA Victor Golden Throat tone system. Yet all this television is yours for only $299.95, suggested list price. Slightly higher in some locations, plus a small federal tax. The console at base at extra cost. See it at your RCA Victor dealers. See why the RCA Victor T-164 is just about perfect for your home. And now, back to Screen Director's Playhouse production of A Kiss in the Dark, starring Jane Wyman in her original role of Polly Haynes, with Olan Soleil as Eric Phillips. The shadow of absentee ownership has fallen over the Cleopatra Arms apartment house. And Mr. Willoughby, gentle Mr. Willoughby, was fired yesterday. But what is this? Can this be Polly Haynes? She of the lovely legs, striding down the corridor leading to Eric Phillips' door, her face set in grim determination. It can be, and is, Polly Haynes. Oh, it's you. You heel! No, 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 Polly. You rat! You, you... Oh, I wish I could think of a nasty word. Pianist? Yes. Thank you. I suppose you've come in connection with Mr. Willoughby. I have. He's heartbroken over what you've done to him. Well, after all, he did sell the Cleopatra arms. Do you know why? 
because he went broke taking care of people in it. Oh? That's right. Oh. Eric Phillips, you're so occupied with yourself that you don't even know what world you're in or what kind of people are in it with you. Well, you can just keep on living in that world all by your selfish self. Goodbye. Hello. Don't yell, Eric. It's Danilo. I hope you've reconsidered your decision to cancel the summer concert tour. I have not. Yes, but Eric, think of the money. Money. The trouble with you, Danilo, is that you you don't know what world you're in or, or what kind of people are in it with you. Eric, is this you? Yes. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'm leaving. But where are you going? I'm going out and make more trouble for myself. I'm beginning to like it. Yes, I'm beginning to like her, too. Mr. Willoughby, can I make you a cup of coffee or something before you go? No, thank you, Polly. That jerk genius. I told him a thing or two. Come in. Mr. Phillips, how dare you? I just came to apologize, Polly. To you, Mr. Willoughby. I want you to stay on and and run the Cleopatra arms for life. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. I, I'll tell everyone the news immediately. Immediately. Oh, Eric, you don't know what you've done for him. Uh, you don't know what I've done for myself. I feel wonderful. <laughs> Goes Botts again. He's in the next apartment. Quiet! <laughs> oh, Botts, I'd like to... Oh, you can't... Your hands. Your hands. That's the answer to the whole problem. Oh. Well, you're worried about not being able to practice. All right, practice here. Here? Mr. Willoughby has a piano. We'll move it right next to that wall, six inches away from Botts' bed. The noise will drive Botts out of his mind and out of the Cleopatra arms. Noise? I mean, your music, Eric. Right. I'll do it tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, tomorrow we declare war. Watch is synchronized. Watch is synchronized. I make it 10 a.m. Check. The target is taking to his bed. Mm. Do you think bots would appreciate a few Strauss waltzes? Are they loud? Very loud. I think he'd love it. Fire away. He stopped pounding. It took all day, but exhaustion has finally set in. Yeah, time for a change of pace. Let's try something different. Oh, that's beautiful, Eric. Just a kiss in the dark. <laughs> it's very convenient. Two people meet, kiss, and bingo. Only it doesn't happen that way. How does it happen, Polly? Propinquity. I beg your pardon? Propinquity. It means nearness. I've, I've got a theory about it. What's your theory? Well, propinquity is really the thing that starts romance. You know, when two people are together for a long period of time. Like us sitting here playing the piano for hours? Mm, something like that. That's how people fall in love? Well, it helps, I guess. Propinquity. Propinquity. It's just a theory. Oh, it couldn't possibly work on us, could it? Well, not possibly. Unless we wanted it to. Well, of course, if we wanted it to. I'd probably kiss you like this. And I'd probably kiss you back like this. Oh. It works. <laughs> Does it work? Uh, <clears throat> Polly. Yes, Eric? What about that fellow who hit me in the eye? Bruce? Uh-uh. Good. 
I wonder what happened to Bot. Sleeping, probably. <laughs> yeah, Polly, don't squeeze the back of my neck so hard. Oh, Eric. <laughs> yes, darling. I've got some terrible news for you. What? <laughs> I'm not even touching the back of your neck. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> to lock the door. Play the piano, will you? Watts, I'm going Eric, to... Eric, your hands. Your hands. I'm going to beat you silly. Darling, run for the bedroom. I'm off. I'll murder you. Yeah, right in here, Watts. Polly, I got him locked in the bedroom. Let me out of here. Let me out. Where do I get the hook from you? Now, what do we do now? Oh, but the piano. Put him to sleep. Let yeah. Me Polly! Oh. Hiya, Mr. Phillips. Oh, who you got in the bedroom, Polly? Bots. Oh. Say, so what's the piano doing here? I'm practicing. Here. Oh. You know, Polly, it's a good thing I'm not the jealous type. What with one guy in the bedroom and another one practicing the piano out here? Especially Mr. Phillips, because he's got lipstick on his face. Because you got li lipstick? Why, you crummy Casanova? I'm gonna. Eric, duck! Oh. Holy smoke, I hit Polly. <laughs> Oh, get a doctor. You'll get a doctor. She's my girl. You just think she is. Polly was putting in time with you to set a sale for an insurance policy. What? Sure, a policy on your hands. And I can prove it. I've got my policy right here. I worked it out with your business manager, and all it needs is your signature. I see. Well, I seem to have made a mistake. Oh, Eric. I, I love you, Eric. What? Polly. Polly, the, the first thing you said was Eric. You said you loved me. Well, of course I love you. That's all I want to know. Why, you double-crosser, stand up and fight like a man. Isn't this before pleasure? You want me to sign that insurance policy? Fight like a man. Sure, I want you to sign it. Where's the pen? Right here. Now, here's the policy. All right, I'll sign. Now then, let me get this straight. My hands are insured against anything? That's right. Fine. Here. Oh, oh poor Bruce. Pardon me, darling. Asleep. <laughs> so is Bruce. Botts has expressed an intention to vacate his apartment. Eric, we've won. All the way around. Hello? Is that you, Eric? It is, Danilo. It most certainly is. Eric, I had to call you. I can't sleep nights. You aren't serious about canceling the summer tour. Oh, darn. There goes another run in my stocking. The summer tour... Mr. Danilo, I just had a wonderful idea. Cancel the winter tour, too. I'm going to be very busy. And you, young lady, do you know what I'm going to be busy with? Propinquity. Sweet propinquity. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking. You have just heard the last act of A Kiss in the Dark. And our star, Jane Wyman, with our guest screen director, Delmer Daves, will be with us in just a moment. Next Friday, another great star brings the excitement of a memorable performance to the screen director's playhouse. Our story is Rope of Sand, and recreating his original role will be Burt Lancaster, with screen director William Dieterle. Now, here again is tonight's star, Jane Wyman. Jane, 
You know, that character, Mr. Botts, made things very difficult for me. For you, Jimmy? How was that? Well, he made fun of music, that's what. And he socked that nice guy, the musician. Oh, why, Jimmy, you act as though he'd hit you. Well, he did hit me in a sense, Jane. You see, I was planning to make a beautiful comparison between the beautiful live music in the play and the beautiful recorded music you hear when you own an RCA Victor 45 RPM automatic record changer and records. I was going to point out that recorded music actually sounds alive on the 45. That's what I was going to say if Potts hadn't spoiled my mood. But you have said it, Jimmy. Well, I... uh... I have said it, haven't I? <laughs> and what's more, I agree with you completely about that live quality. It's marvelous. Well, now we're clicking. Uh, which Model 45 do you own, Jane? The plug-in model for $12.95 or the $29.95 complete phonograph, the Victrola 45? The Victrola 45. And I love its looks, Jimmy. It's so small and cute and streamlined. And I love those tiny 45 platters that change automatically. Platters? Well, maybe saucers would describe their size more accurately. Oh, oh yes, the, the records are only seven inches across. That handy record size, Jane, is one reason why the 45, in just one year on the market, has become the fastest-selling record system in history. Those RCA Victor 45s are fairly flying out of the factory. Say, maybe those flying saucers are 45 records. I wouldn't be surprised, Jane. <laughs> And speaking of surprises, you know, RCA Victor has come up with a honey to celebrate the first birthday of the 45. They brought out a special first anniversary album of ten records by America's favorite artists and bands. And they're offering it, along with the Victrola 45, for the usual price of the Victrola 45 alone. Only $29.95. Friends, don't miss this wonderful value. It's at your RCA Victor dealers for a limited time only. A matchless Victrola 45... Plus, a delightful 10-record first anniversary album with selections by top artists such as Perry Como, Vaughn Monroe, Tommy Dorsey, and the Boston Pops. All for only $29.95. Ladies and gentlemen, I confess I wondered a little when I learned that A Kiss in the Dark was to be directed by the creator of such films as... Destination Tokyo, Pride of the Marines, and Task Force. After all, a girl is entitled to wonder when she's directed by a man who specializes in making submarines and aircraft carriers look good. But believe me, he's a man to wonder at. A wonderful director, Delmer Daves. Thank you, Jane. But if all battleships looked as wonderful as you do on the screen, a lot more men would be running off to join the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you flatter me. Now, enough of your winning ways. And for goodness sakes, tell us how you turn from high adventure films to a picture like A Kiss in the Dark. Oh, that's easy, Jane. Propinquity. <laughs> Propinquity? It means nearness. I know, Dell. I heard the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing that starts the motion picture. You know, when a director gets alone with a script and he... Knows that Jane Wyman is going to be the star. Oh, but there's no adventure. Just propinquity and a barrel of fun. <laughs> Mr. Daves, it takes much more than just propinquity to make a motion picture. It takes a director to show us how and why. So here's my thanks, Dell, to you and to all the directors. Thank you, Jane, and good night. Good night, Dell. Good night, everyone. A good night to you, Jane Wyman and Delma Daves. Remember next Friday, Burt Lancaster in Ropes of Sand with screen director William Dieterle, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. A Kiss in the Dark was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of Caged, starring Eleanor Parker. Jane Wyman can currently be seen in the Warner Brothers production Stage Fright. Delmer Dave's latest picture is the 20th Century Fox production... Broken Arrow, starring Jimmy Stewart. You are invited to listen again next Friday when RCA Victor presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Burt Lancaster, production Rope of Sand, director William Dieterle. Stay tuned for Jimmy the Great Rupert Durante on NBC.